Welcome guys to another episode of NBA Fantasy Lounge and today we're going to be talking about the different types of NBA Fantasy Leagues that you can play in. We're going to break down some of the different ones and go through their uh, pros, their cons and some tips as well if you were to play those leagues and we're also going to touch on the different drafting types and also the different platforms that you can play NBA Fantasy on. Because look, it can be a little bit confusing, especially for um, for newbies to it. And so I want to give you a bit of an understanding about the different leagues and um, which one may best suit you as well. So we'll get into it right now and we'll start off with the head-to-head league. So the head-to-head league, the reason we're starting off here is that this is my personal favorite league. Um, and it's basically, there are two styles to head-to-head. You have a points or a category-based um, head-to-head league. Uh, these are the terms uh, that are sort of interchangeable, by the way. I, uh, if you go around the internet, you'll get different different names. However, these are the most common. And basically what it is, is that you play, You if you have a 10-team league, you play one person in that league every single week, right? And each particular, uh, as each week goes by, you play a different, people, different person or a different team as well. So you play a new opponent each week and basically um you will play uh you'll play them based off the categories as well so let's say you play in a league that is a standard nine category lead so when i say standard nine category i mean you've got your standard nine cats which is points rebounds assists steals blocks turnovers uh, field goal percentage free throw percentage and three pointers so that's your standard nine categories that's what people refer to as standard nine cat so what will happen is that in a head-to-head league um or a cats league what will happen is that you play uh, an opponent each particular week and every time you beat that opponent in one category you'll get one point so at the end of the le- at the end of that week you can have a maximum of nine wins and zero losses or you could have you know zero wins and nine losses if you lost every single if you lost them in every single category to win or lose it's pretty simple as well you just have to have more stats than that person so for points if you have 600 points the other person has 700 the other person wins for free throw percentage if you finish at 85 percent they finish at 87 percent for the week they win as well so it's pretty simple as well the difference between cats and points is that it's the same concept except for the fact that points you get different points based off each particular win and that is that is defined at the start of the league by the commissioner as well who can define any sort of strategy or uh, setting that he wants so for example let's say you have the same nine categories um every every category is is one point except for rebounds you get three points so every time you win each week at rebounds you get three points whereas if you win at any others you get one point and this changes the whole strategy because you don't have to win uh, five and then lose it four to win that week. You can actually you know, win even four, and if you win that rebound, you'll still get more points, right? Because it's worth three points versus one. Um, with that said, as well, just remember you can you can have all sorts of points uh, based allocation. So you can have three points for rebounds, one points for steals, two points for uh, three pointers, whatever it is as well. So it's not just that you can only select one to have one category to have more than one points uh one point wins you can have you know multiple you can have all of them to have three points each so that's in between categories and points um points is becoming very popular now people like that as well because it's a little bit different um you get more points uh, winning off different categories and you can maybe strategize in different ways i still prefer the the standard category leagues um because you get one point per win and it allows you it, it doesn't allow you to the any managers to basically uh, make one value one category valuable for example um, you know if rebounds and field goal percentage were worth five points where everything else was just one then obviously everyone's just going to draft centers right because they get more rebounds and they shoot a higher field goal percentage and it makes those players more valuable and it's only a certain amount of them in the league that you can get into so once everyone has those players becomes pretty much impossible to well not impossible but hard to beat them so that's why i prefer head-to-head over points but they're both really fun they're both fun because of that head-to-head concept concept as well now we'll get into some of the pros and cons so some of the pros is it's more entertaining playing player versus player um no one is ever on a contention because you can essentially finish um finish uh, sort of you can just sneak your way into the playoffs and it does include a playoff system i should have mentioned as well and what i mean by that last point no one is ever on a contention is that the playoff system is generally elimination based meaning that you can finish first at the regular season of your fantasy league and then when it goes to playoffs you could play let's say the sixth seed and you could lose in that first round and be bounced that's it you're gone so it's sort of cool because no one is ever out of contention and the best team in the regular season uh doesn't automatically mean that they're going to win in the playoffs as well which is cool it keeps it interesting it keeps people engaged as well you don't have to finish first to have a chance of winning the whole thing and it's just kind of cool in my opinion so it's a little bit more a little bit more luck based uh just a tiny bit but also just more entertaining more fun and more prone to risk and surprises which is cool 
some of the cons as well um as i said it does involve a little bit of luck doesn't always reward the best player as i said you can finish first and then still be bounced out of the playoffs and the playoffs can happen during silly season so it's important as well to join leagues where the playoffs sort of happen at like at the i'd say mid-march is a really good time the reason being is that once you once you have playoffs starting in april think about it in april you get a lot of load management teams out of contention that are just resting players for the sake of it um teams that are you know have already got their playoff spots start resting their players or um giving them very small minutes and then you've got all these awesome players like Kawhi Leonard who just gets load managed all the time and it's like you you used him to get to the playoffs and then he's not even going to be usable either and then you get a lot of these what's called silly season heroes last year I had Drew Eubanks um he got a ton of minutes because Nurkic was in it and heaps of other Portland players were injured plus they weren't in contention for the playoffs so these guys dominated and they're not really great players in real life um but you know it they ended up being silly season heroes because they get a lot of minutes and a lot of stats obviously at the end of the season as well so some pros and cons there it's up to you it's all subjective tell me what you think uh, about head-to-head tell me what you think of pros and cons about it and just some tips as well you know if you do go with the head-to-head i would suggest all these drafting centers in the early rounds unless again you've got you play some sort of points league that's maybe heavily based towards three pointers or assists um, reason being as well in standard nine category league Drafting good centers that contribute in multiple categories becomes really difficult after like rounds sort of six. Um, and even, you know, most of them go in rounds one to four as well. So try and get a good amount of centers early unless you've got a strat- uh, a punting strategy where you're punting rebounds or field goal percentage or something. And this leads into the second tip. Sort of focus on a strategy if you're playing nine cat, right? You only have to win five of the nine categories, right? In order to win that week. And um, and obviously, when it's, once you get to the playoffs, once you if you win five of the nine categories, you progress to the next round as well. So it's really important to sort of focus on the strategy where possible. Don't force a strategy. What I mean by this is, let's say, for example, you draft Giannis in your first round with your first round pick, and then you draft Rudy Gobert with your second round pick, right? Just because it falls to you. Great, that's that's all well and good, but there's no point drafting like uh, we'll say Demar Derozan after that, right? Because why? Because you've already got two horrible free throw percentage shooters. Why get another one who's good, who's not going to really maximize that category? It's just going to balance out that category, and it doesn't even really balance it out correctly anyway. So, uh, if I was to draft those two first, uh, I would then go on to sort of maybe punt free throws, um, or maybe focus on players who don't really help in free throws anyway. Um, it's just a strategy that's available at the time and allows you to sort of maximize players' abilities and become really good at a few uh, categories and not so and become average or bad at some categories as well. I always love to draft like three-point assist type players. Just just sort of interests me. My turnovers always become punt um, every single season, basically, just by luck. So hopefully this season's not going to be the case. So that is the head-to-head league. Let's move on to the next one, which is the Roto League now. Now, the Roto League is the standard. I actually played this when I first started. Um, Roto League's are pretty cool, um, as you can see by the rotisserie chicken in the picture. Um, so basically, it's the same concept where you earn points for categories you have, and the, the amount of categories you can have as well are customizable. So I, I did mention that nine category. Any of these leagues can have more than nine or less than nine. It's up to the commission. You can have things like double doubles and triple doubles and all sorts of other stuff as well. That's up to you. Now, the difference between Roto and head to head is purely that instead of playing one opponent, each week you play the whole entire league each week for example let's say you're in a 10 team league right uh if you have the most assists for that league you will get 10 points right if you have finished ninth that week in assists in the most assists you'll get nine points if you finish last you'll get one point and so on so basically what happens is for each category that you have in your league you will get a point uh based off where you finish against everyone else in that league and then at the end of the season you tally up all those points and whoever has the most points simply wins so in my opinion if we move on to the pros it's a little bit more of a fair over the season because what it does is that a it takes the playoffs out of it which means that you sort of lose that silly season this but um silly season concept but more importantly you're playing everyone each week so for example in head-to-head um I could do really well during the season, but it just so happened that every time I played really good teams, they had big injuries and they ended up winning uh, because of that. Um, it's a bit of luck, right? And it's 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 sometimes you all say, you know, percentages play out over the course of a season. But with uh, Broto, you have to play everyone each league. So even if one guy has a bunch of injuries, you're still playing other guys who don't have injuries. So it's really sort of getting giving you a fair assessment of the better team over the course of a season. It's just subjective, and that's my opinion at the end of the day, but um, it's a little bit more fair as well. Now, the cons about this is that it's not as entertaining. Now, what I mean by that is that if you have a really good team with a bunch of like multi cap players, let's say they have, like, you know, like Jokic and um, Tyler, Tyrese Halliburton and all these other players that are just like really good with multiple categories, DeJounte Murray, etc. Um, 
it becomes really difficult to catch up to them, I find, and um, as a result, it becomes hard to trade as well because those players are more valuable because they contribute over multiple categories as well and don't really hurt you in any category. So it's harder to trade, in my opinion, which I love. I love trading, which is why I love head-to-head -head more because when you have head-to-head, -head, like I can value, for example, three-pointers, but someone else can value rebounds and we can make an equal trade, even though they're both really good players, whereas this is a little bit harder. There's also no playoffs in Roto, meaning that once you get to the end of the regular season, that's the end of your fantasy season, unless it's uh, pushed earlier as well. And it's just not as entertaining because of that, um, as well as the fact that, you know, it's a little bit harder to trade. So that's just my opinion, really subjective. Let me know what you guys think. They're both cool, head-to-head -head and Roto. I've played both before and I, I did. I still do like Roto as well. I just much prefer head-to-head. -head. Um, just some tips as well if you do play roto i always used to like to get ahead on percentage categories or efficiency categories so that's your fifth free throw and field goal percentage purely because if you get really good at them at the start it's hard to catch up because of the volume so for example even if you are lagging in that category and let's say you trade for like demar Derozan, a free throw percentage shooter or james harden it's still hard to catch up just with that one person because it's an amount of volume of free throws at a good percentage that get you there whereas if you have a couple at the start of players on your team that are good at field goal and free throw it becomes a lot a lot harder to catch up with them later so try and maximize those sorts of um, efficiency categories early on and then you can maybe trade down later on and, and boost your points or whatever later because you can pick them off the waiver wire and things like that as well so head to head roto they're the main two leads we're going to touch the last one as well which could be of interest to you so let's get into it and we have the dynasty keeper leagues now the dynasty and keeper leagues um the best way to describe this is that it's like a gm league basically what happens is you draft your league and you said you either get to keep some or all of your players in each particular league and then you get draft picks for the rookies in next season as well um depending on the way that the league's customized so many leagues are customized in different ways that's the difference between dynasty and keeper generally dynasty refers to where you keep all your players and keepers where you keep a few of your players uh and then the rest go into being redrafted as well as the rookies for next year the cool part about this is that you get draft picks each um, season and based on where you finish as well and obviously that helps people who finish last get greater draft picks for next season and then you can also trade those draft picks uh, and this comes back to that gm feel that i was talking about which is a really cool concept um, some of the pros and cons about it so the pros is that to me is that you don't need to check your lineup all week. So there's a lot of people that love fantasy sports in general, but they just don't have the time to check every day, especially with NBA fantasy, where you get you know really poor injury reports, players being pulled out last minute, 30 minutes for games, and you have to be hot in the waiver wire. Whereas this, you're more likely to just hold one team over a course of a season and not really do too much waiver wire pickups. Um, you know, unless there's injuries and things like that, or you find really good gems. For the most part, you don't have too many trades and you don't have too many waiver wire pickups. So it's good like that. It also allows for deeper leagues. So it's built for for leagues that have like you know 14 plus to 20 teams in it. Uh, whereas in my opinion, head to head and roto, um, you really only want, in my opinion, 14 is the absolute max. Um, I don't even like 14. I like 12. The reason being, you got to go smaller in the roto and head to head is that because once you have more teams, you have less players available in the waiver wire. And if there's less players available in the waiver wire, then you've got no one good, no talent on that because all the good ones are already on a team, and then it becomes really difficult to to um, pick up players who can replace injury prone players and things like that as well so that's why dynasty is kind of cool um it's a little bit less um what's the word um involvement for people and also gives that sort of gm feel some of the cons as well um people get lose interest over a long season because they're not checking as much you also get um teams that tank a lot because once they sort of lose interest and they're not going to win they just sort of tank for draft picks or they just lose interest and and as a result it can result in um as a result it can result in owner turnovers so they get sort of bored and then they just end up not playing or they want to leave and then you've got to find a new player to play dynasty and there's not as many teams playing dynasty so it's not always easy to replace them as well so if you did play in this league the main tip i would say is try and draft um definitely play in a league of 14 or more i'd say at least probably even 16 plus 18 is good 20 is like 20 is probably pretty extreme but um yeah sort of 16 18 is really good because then you get not so many gems off the waiver wire everyone sort of picked a team and um you know it's uh, something that you can keep for a long period of time that contributes and also try and get join a league where you where the commission is discouraging tanking or encouraging teams uh to uh, losing teams to play as well because as i said they have that losing interest over time it can become a bit boring so there is a number of strategies around that mainly around like maybe um uh eliminating draft picks for players who are um who are tanking or maybe even taking draft picks away from people who are winning too much so that it can help people um continue to play next season and give them a chance to always sort of contribute so that is a dynasty keeper league I haven't tried any of these um head to head's my preference 
Roto is my second preference. I think either of them are really good in dynasty keepers, probably for people who who either love NBA fantasy, the GM style, and they just want to get into that, or people who have played for a long time. But try them all out. At the end of the day, that's the only way you're going to know which ones you like. And again, let me know which ones uh, you like in the comments and some of the pros and cons, or some of the tips you have for other players as well. Because you know, um, having played for a while, you, you develop, I've played for a long period of time now, and I've developed my own tips. So everyone has their own strategy. So please share some in the comments as well. So we're going to quickly just going to touch on the drafting aspect now as well. So we actually have two types of draft. We have the live draft and the offline draft. Um, the live drafts are your snake and your auction, and then the offline draft is uh, your one you do offline as well. So snake draft is, um, as you can see in the bottom left screen, a bottom left screenshot is basically a snake uh, position draft where you do it live and every team gets a pick based off this based off the amount of plays in the league so in this particular example we have 10 teams in the league team one gets uh the first pick and then it goes all the way down to team 10 team 10 gets the 10th pick and gets the 11th pick because it basically snakes back up the other way and as you can see when it snakes back up to team one again they get the 20th pick and the 21st pick so basically it goes in a snake like the game snake if you have the 8210 knock here for, uh, for you old schoolers. So that is the snake draft. That's my favorite. That's probably the most common one. In addition to live drafts, you also have the auction draft, which can be done in the snake as well. You we also have the auction draft where it's uh, done in a live environment where everyone's drafting at the same time, uh, no matter where they're geographically located. And the cool part about it is that you, you generally get like a, con uh, a pool of money. And with that pool of money, you can bid on players as well until all your sort of money's gone. So it's cool because it separates different people's values. So for example, uh, you know, Tyrese Halliburton's a good player. I might have maybe paid, you know, five dollars for him, but someone else could have paid seven dollars for him last season because they saw a lot of value in him. And at the end of the day, um, you know, he could be worth a lot more than you paid for him. So you might have paid seven at the start of the season, but he's performing like a fourteen-dollar player. It's similar to fantasy Premier League. Um, as well, where you get a, a you know amount of money and then you can sort of uh, buy the players, but that's a fixed amount. Uh, whereas, and you can redraw, oh, not redraw, but you can put put plays in and out of your lineup each week. Whereas this is just done at that one time as well. So auctions really cool, especially for people who love sort of betting with money and and having some different value and higher stakes. I think it's really cool as well. Give them both a try. Both of them are mock. Uh, you can do bock drafts on both. I would say definitely give them both a try as well, which is really fun. The last one is offline draft. This is one I definitely discourage people to do. It's only really good if you don't have the time to um, all draft at the same time because you're geographically spread and you just can't seem to line up the time. But what happens is basically you rank each player um, or as many players as you want um, in your ranking system. And then what will happen is that the uh, once the draft starts, it'll automatically just pick the highest player in your rank when your pick is up as well. So it doesn't allow you to strategize, doesn't allow you to pick um, people that you may have thought were available but are no longer available later on and it's just sort of hard to sort of strategize um, and, and be scenario based so I definitely don't encourage that um, just do that as a sort of last uh, last ditch effort if you can't get everyone in the same room at the same time and talking about mock drafts let's look at platforms so I've uh, listed here four platforms you got Yahoo, ESPN, Fantrax, and CBS Sport. Now, my preference at the bottom, as you can see, is Yahoo by far. And the reason being is that it has a clean interface. Uh, it has a really good, um, it has a really good mobile app, web app as well. And uh, my personal favorite probably is that it's just a really good um, drafting uh lobby meaning that it's uh when you prepare for the draft as well you can star players you have a do not draft list you can pre-rank um and it's just really easy to see what other players are drafting in the time where everyone's ranked um it's just like just looks really nice you can see all the players stats really easily and things like that so that's just a personal preference but i also like the fact that it's got an awesome mobile app being as well is that majority of people still play Yahoo Fantasy a lot uh, on Reddit and the uh, Edgeboard forums. You can always find people who are on the Yahoo app versus ESPN, and but those two are generally the main as well. And look, it can be different for every sport. And this is only for NBA Fantasy. I know when I played ESPN, uh, when I played NFL Fantasy, uh, NFL Fantasy was really good in ESPN uh, versus other ones. And a lot of people like Yahoo for baseball, for example. So it really depends. I can only talk about NBA bar, uh, Fantasy in this particular case, but those two are my top two. Yahoo being the preference, and Fantrax and CBS are up and coming. Um, they've been there for a uh, not upcoming. They've been there for a while, but they're just not as as popular as the other two. Um, but they're definitely worth uh, worth some attention as well. So have a look at the websites as well if you want to get a feel for them. Maybe you just like the UIs and you can uh, go through those ones and try them. I think most have mock drafts now, so you can easily try all three. Uh, sorry, all four, and you can pick the one that you prefer as well. So let me know as well if there's any of these any any platforms that are missing from this list that you um, that you know and have used. I'd love to hear some feedback on that, and maybe I'll do a video on that as well. 
otherwise guys um, and i hope you learned something from this particular video i know it can be super confusing when you first start so hopefully it helps some people out as well and let me know as well what you think about um you know these leagues which ones you prefer uh whether you have any tips or strategies for, for newbies as well because it's all you know it's all good to share um different strategies with people that's the best part of fantasy not one strategy is always going to win it's going to be different on how you want to play it as well so let us know in the comments and as always let me know what else you want to um what other videos you'd like to hear uh, i've got a lot more upcoming videos and i've been away for a couple of weeks but i'm back now and i'll be doing a lot more videos planning to do some mock drafts um, some videos on do not draft lists and things like that as well to help you guys prepare for uh the next nba fantasy draft so until next time easy and don't forget if to like comment and subscribe if you like this video thanks a lot guys have a good one